when I was reviewing webinar platforms, one of the things I complained about several times is when there's a cutoff limit, usually at two hours. And let me explain that in some more detail, because maybe you're wondering, well, are you seriously going to do a webinar that takes longer than two hours? Like in this age of distraction, who the hell is going to pay attention to you for more than like 10 minutes? Does it really matter if you can't run a webinar for more than two hours? Hello, I'm Shane Melach from activegrowth.com. And if you've watched my previous webinar platform reviews, for example, when I was talking about Webinar Ninja or Crowdcast, one of the things I listed as a downside was that you can't do webinars that run for longer than two hours. And that might seem like a strange complaint because two hours is a lot of time, right? So let me clarify this a bit from my experience as someone who's done hundreds of webinars so far. So first of all, two hours does seem like a long time, but I don't think I've ever done a live event like this that wasn't at least like 70 minutes long or so. And the shortest events tend to be kind of Q&A sessions, group coaching sessions, meetings. And for more on that, by the way, I also have a video about the different types of online events and the difference between a group meeting, a webinar, and a live stream, for example. So when I'm doing a group coaching type thing or an ask me anything webinar or something like that, that tends to run for maybe an hour to 80 minutes or so. In other words, even without a prepared presentation, without a sales pitch, without any of this kind of stuff, just interacting with a relatively small group of people online, answering some questions and things like that, time flies. More importantly, let's talk about sales webinars and educational webinars. So when I have a prepared presentation, and especially when there's also a sales pitch at the end. Here's how that usually goes. Even what I would consider a fairly short presentation on a webinar is usually going to run for at least 45 minutes. And then there is the sales pitch, which is gonna be maybe 10 to 20 minutes. And then there's gonna be Q and A, which is easily gonna be another 20 to 30 minutes. So right there, okay, we can jam that into a two hour duration, but we're already getting damn close to that cutoff point. And that's talking about what I would consider a short presentation. I think it's very easy to make a packed presentation on something that I'm an expert in and take up like 60 minutes or longer. And that's even more true if you have co-presenters and you're switching back and forth between presentations. And if you do interactive things like polls in between your presentation. So all of this will easily make a presentation run pretty long. And if you're wondering, well, does anyone have the patience for such a long presentation, for such a long webinar? There are two important factors to keep in mind. The first is that when you're doing a sales webinar, you have a similar relation between the length of the webinar and the price of the product you're selling as you do on the length of a sales page. In other words, if I'm selling something for $10, I don't have to have a huge sales page do a lot of work convincing someone to give me $10. But if I'm selling something for, let's say, $1,000 or $2,000, then I need a long sales page. The same is true for a webinar. If I'm trying to sell something at a high price, then my chances of converting people are better if I've delivered a ton of value for an hour beforehand, if I've taught people tons of valuable stuff, I've shown that I know my stuff, they're going to be much more likely to be willing to buy, let's say, a high-priced course than if I do a quick 20-minute presentation and then I go, okay, reach for your checkbooks, please. The second factor is that with a webinar, we are not trying to keep the attention of the largest amount of people for as long as possible. What happens is that, of course, the longer the webinar goes, the smaller the audience becomes. More and more people will drop off over time. But what we're interested in is we're interested in talking about the most engaged super fans or the people for whom our content is the most relevant. Right? The people who have the most burning problem that we're helping them solve will happily stick around for two hours or longer if they're getting value. And so the goal in a long webinar is to whittle down the audience to the most engaged, most perfect target audience for your offer. And that brings me to the last point and the main reason why for me the two hour cutoff limit is a real issue. When you're doing a sales webinar, you've done your presentation, you've done your sales pitch and you get into the Q&A, then you will see that when you first make your pitch, some sales will come in, but usually not that many. I've experienced this many times that I'm doing a webinar to a room with many people 
maybe 200 or more people. And I present the pitch and at first, just not much happens in terms of sales. What does happen is that a lot of questions start coming in. So then during the Q&A, people will ask all kinds of questions to clarify what the offer is about and to basically bring up their objections where they go, hold on, will this work for me? I'm in this kind of situation. Or do you have a money back guarantee? Or whatever, whatever is on their minds. And all of this will come in as questions. And as you go through and answer those questions, more and more sales keep coming in. Now picture this scenario, right? You're 90 minutes in, you're starting your Q&A session. And as you're answering questions, sales are coming in. And let's say you earn $1,000 per sale. And maybe the room has 200 people right now. You keep answering questions, you keep answering questions, sales keep coming in, and less and less people are in the room. Many people will make the purchase and then leave and they'll start using the product, for example. Other people will be like, okay, I've seen enough. I'm not going to buy this now. And they'll also leave. So let's say we're reaching that two hour point and at this point there's only a hundred people left, but there's still questions coming in. You're still answering them. And most importantly, there are still sales coming in. Now imagine that right now, something like one sale every five minutes is happening. A thousand dollars every five minutes of you answering questions. And then your webinar platform says, I'm sorry, you've reached a two hour limit. We've booted everyone out. See how this is a problem? And I have been there, okay? I've done many a sales webinar with long Q&A sessions. I've done webinars that have had more than 100 people in the room after more than three hours of runtime. And I've done webinars where we have sold more than $50,000 worth of product in one single webinar. And if you took that webinar and you chopped off everything after the two hour mark, that earning would have probably gone down to maybe 20,000. So in short, this is why I make a fuss about a limit on the runtime of a webinar. If I'm paying for something like GoToWebinar, which is exorbitantly expensive, I can make that money back in a single good sales webinar. But if you have a solution that has nice and fancy features and is maybe cheaper than GoToWebinar, but it cuts me off after two hours, that can literally cost me thousands of dollars in a single event. And so any savings I have from a lower subscription price are just not worth it. So this is why I urge you to, to first of all, don't worry about, is my webinar too long? A webinar can never be too long. It can only be too boring. As long as people are still watching and still interacting and still buying, keep going. That's an important principle. If you're doing a sales webinar, keep going until people stop buying. And if you're choosing a webinar platform, choose one that lets you keep going until people stop buying. All right, so that's my rant about the two hour limit on webinar platforms. Hopefully you can now understand why this is a deal breaker for me. And if you have any thoughts or input on this, let me know by leaving a comment below.